Hi folks, uh, this is a demo of ways to use an iPad in lectures for a project I call uh, Lecture Unleashed. The goal of this project is to make uh, lectures more engaging. Now, I'm basically videotaping this to demonstrate how I have freedom of motion because I'm lecturing from an iPad. You're not going to be able to read what's on the screen, um, but that's okay because I'm screencasting this, so you can actually view the presentation uh, offline at your convenience. Uh, my, my name is uh, Kevin Nealon, and over the past four or five years, chances are I've fixed your stuff because I work at the help desk. And what I'm looking to do is move out of information technology and into instructional technology. Because it's my firm belief that um, I can help faculty use technology to help SU students learn. And basically, this is a demonstration of, one, lecturing from an iPad and how it gives you the ability to move anywhere you want in the room. Uh, using builds and transitions in a presentation to spruce it up. Uh, basically, we're just adding motion, if you will, because motion is engaging. I know it's a little odd me talking to an empty room. Uh, later on, using digital ink on a slide. It's kind of like the old overheads. But the nice thing is we're screencasting it so people can review it later. Um, Real-time in-class assessments, basically. You know, you could poll the class, do you get it? And, as I've said before, we're recording this lecture for viewing on, online. So, what I want to, and the tools that I'm using uh, are basically uh, the software, the iPad on, uh, is Keynote for the presentation, Sync Space for the digital ink, uh, Lecture Tools website to create and run the interactive questions, and the Lecture Tool app, which is a, uh, an app for the iPad that the students will use to uh, actually respond to the online assessments. So basically I'm going to start a little um, presentation uh, that I did for Dr. Bowser's uh, classroom management course. Uh, and I call it iPads in the Classroom. Basically, you can create uh, lecture tools, uh, supports all sorts of interactive um, uh, slides. Uh, in fact, you can see the kinds of slides it does support. Um, multiple choice, short answer, a list, an image quiz, basically you have to identify a particular part of the image if you move something to it. Uh, numerical response and multimedia, where you can make reference to a YouTube, a TED, um, some other website. Um, it does have the ability to import slides from a presentation program. However, um, it only brings in the slide as a PDF, like I brought this one in just, just to have one, uh, but you doesn't support any builds or any transitions, so it's a static slide. So ideally, I would basically give the lecture, I would come to a spot in the lecture where I wanted a, uh, um, an in-class assessment, and then go back to the podium where my Mac is, and actually uh, start the, uh, the assessment. So you publish a lecture, and then we go ahead and present. And like, here's the first slide. Now I'll go back over to the, uh, to the iPad now. And I'm going to start up lecture tools on the iPad. And as I said, this is, I've already signed in here. Uh, and this is the student interface to lecture tools. Um, I'm going to give a quick demo of some things. Um, flag here basically means you don't understand. 
this, that this, the student doesn't understand. Star means is, it's basically something for the student to call it important. And this pen here actually allows the student to do annotations on the slide. Um, the student can also do uh, have their own notes over here and they can also ask a question by tapping that. So let me ask a question. Uh, so in a moment, let me clear that back. So now I'm going to transition back to the um, uh, instructor interface on the website. So right here uh, is a dashboard and this basically shows that we've got a confused student, okay? That one student doesn't understand what's going on here. Uh, the other one is for questions. So why is that? You'll notice that you can either hide the names or show the names. Right now, there's only one student in this class. Uh, and then you can uh, answer the question. Um, we'll be smart about this. And the student will actually see that. Now, you can um, actually do a Q&A here. So later on, you can actually see these things. But I do like the fact that a student can basically ask anonymously. So let's go back to the iPad here and let's say we'll go to the first, oops, I have to turn the pen off. We'll go to the first um, multiple choice question. So, you know, what are some of the characteristics of a mobile device? Um, I'm not crazy about the interface here. Basically, I have to go edit response and then I can go ahead and pick things uh, that I think are right. Let's see, uh, single hand use, like it's kind of rugged. Hit the response. All right, let me go back over to the uh, instructor side. side. So here I am on the instructor side. I'll go to slide two. I can basically see all of this. And down here, We've got a little something that describes how many students have actually completed the uh, polling. Uh, this allows us to turn the polling off and on so now nobody can add or change. And then we can look at what students picked. And then we can also pick the answers. Okay, so you can, you can see how this is kind of like instant feedback not only for um, the instructor, but the students as well. Let's uh, let's go to the next slide, and we'll pick another one over here, back on the uh, the iPad. So edit response. Let's see, no moving parts. Spill resistant. Don't have a lid, and but let's say I can mark it. You know, as I'm kind of confused about this. So we go back over to the uh, um, instructor side. We can see our response has come in. We'll turn the polling off so people can't change it. You know, we can, we can see that one person is confused, okay? If you had had, and you can actually see what, their, what the response activity was like. Um, and then we can go check the results and see what the answers were. And reset basically would allow the students to try again. Um, let me just show some of the others. Uh, you can also have follow-up questions. Uh, so does an iPad have folders like a Mac? And basically, as soon as they answer that one, it'll uh, go to this question, why is a modern OS like an ecosystem? In fact, let me uh, go back to the student iPad interface and let me go over to that one. Um, so this is basically a short answer. Is well tight. <laughs> Submit the response. So over here, going back to the uh, instructor web interface, um, I can then ask for the results. 
And you can basically all see the responses that everybody's put out. And now you can even draw um, on these as well. Probably have to turn off polling. So, oh, I take that back. This 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 won't work on uh, in an interactive slide. This would be uh, digital ink on a um, uh, on an on an actual slide. But at that point, you can see the uh, the different responses that came in. So. Uh, that's a quick overview as to what um, uh, uh, Lecture Tools is about. Um, I think it could be, it seems fairly easy to employ uh, and to integrate into a, um, a regular um, presentation. And you have the option of either just calling upon um, Lecture Tools when you want an assessment uh, or you can use it for the entire um, uh, lecture. Although I still prefer, my personal preference would be to use an actual presentation program because they look better. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show and uh, love to see uh, an instructor use these systems. I went ahead and switched over to Explain Everything, uh, which I believe we all have on our MacBooks as it is, and it's, and it's free. Um, and it's been working much better. Uh, so right now, I'm not going to go into detail about this program. Um, I'm just going to demo what it can do, the little demo that I have here. This, this little control here actually takes it out of... Um, design mode and into a presentation mode. Uh, and this little thing here is actually a pointer. Uh, because in a screencast, you won't see my finger. So you have to have something that shows up on the screen for it. And I'll switch to the screencast that I'm taking right now. Um, but I wanted to uh, show you uh, how I'm manipulating this program. So I'm also photographing the iPad itself. So, as they say, on with the show. So, if you go back five or seven years ago, um, an operating system was this rather primitive island. Uh, yeah, you had, let's say, an office suite on it and other programs. And um, you had little bridges to um, things like email and web and uh, file servers, but not much, not much lived on the program itself, or I'm sorry, on the, uh, the island itself. They were pretty primitive. So we jump forward to current, and things are a lot more crowded. Uh, we've got, well, I'm putting Apple Mail up here for a reason. We've got iWorks and an app store and uh, bookmarks and all of your digital lifestyle stuff. And I'm even putting Safari up here as well. Um, in fact, let me go ahead and take AppleWorks out of the island for a moment. Um, so, you have a much more diverse, shall we say, ecosystem on this island now. And not only do you have the, the Mac island, if you will, but you, you also have, let's pick a different color here, um, a uh, another little island for the iPad itself or iOS devices and iCloud here is used as a bridge and this would be almost like a super highway here it's it's uh, a complete and seamless bridge between these two products. Um, but even the bridge, let's say, going out through, let's say, Apple Mail, you're going to mail something, has features uh, like from iWorks and Safari or, or even bookmarks or, um, let's say, iPhoto. That would be another good example here. Uh, if I want to send a document from iWorks or Safari or iPhoto. Um, they're all kind of set up 
to use uh, to use Apple Mail. I mean, they've all kind of got this little on-ramp system, if you will, to to use Apple Mail, and it's seamless. Uh, if I had a different program, uh, you know, not Apple Mail, uh, then there's no easy way off the island for these programs. Now, uh, basically all of the all of the different uh, OS providers have their own little ecosystems these days, and there's pretty much pretty good bridges. Let's pick a different color. Uh, between all of these islands, okay? Uh, so, yeah, moving, moving something like email across is pretty simple. Uh, but, for instance, and we still have iCloud here, and it's acting as a uh, superhighway, if you will, between the, uh, between the Mac operating system and iOS, or in this case, the iPad. Uh, you know, so this is a uh, this is a seamless uh, connection here. However, there's no seamless connection at all between, let's say, Office and the iPad, or a Microsoft Office document and the Mac. Um, yes, you can run Office on a Mac, and that's fine, but it won't be able to make use of iCloud. So another way of thinking about this is, um, let's use a big green dot, uh, what you really have to do is kind of like set sail to the, uh, shall we say, the, um, the uh, Dropbox archipelago. And uh, let's finish our journey to get to um, either uh, um, the Mac or to, um, to an iPad. And it's not that easy a journey, okay? You're basically taking this little, this little boat ride here and, you know, there's shoals and um, reefs and all sorts of things that you have to navigate to get, let's say, from the Microsoft ecosystem to the Mac ecosystem or the iPad ecosystem. So that's what I mean by um, staying within a particular ecosystem. If you do that, and I, honestly, they have very similar capabilities. Uh, they have different philosophies to go about doing things, um, but they're, uh, they're quite similar. But anyway, if you stay within an ecosystem, life is easy. Uh, it, it flows. If you start to mix and match between one ecosystem and another, if there isn't a bridge, you have to take a bit of a trip, a journey, shall we say, to uh, get there, and life is hard. So um, I hope you enjoyed the uh, presentation and the demo of an uh, digital ink system.